Okay, brothers and sisters, we are we are more than happy uh, to bring you this program. We have two people this morning to deal with a subject that I think we all, really all black folk, should really become more conscious of, more aware of. And they would see that our ancestors are really returning. This is this is not, you know, this is not the stuff you throw up on the wall and hope that it sticks. This is real. Uh, the brother we're going to be interviewing this morning um, is a brother by the name of Tu M Ra. And I always miss, I don't know why I can't get this name right, but is that close? That was good. Two Tim Ra. Ra. Two Tim Ra. Two Tim uh, Ra. Tim Ra. And we also have Mama Moshe with us. Uh, many of you have heard Mama Moshe before. So um, I'm, I'm, uh, the brother and I were having a conversation just before we um, came on the air. And I want to um, go back to some of the things that we talked about uh, in that conversation. Um, and he was telling me about um, a lot of people are claiming that they are the reincarnation of somebody, uh, but he can kind of explain this a lot better than I can. So we're gonna open up with brother, um, to Timra, to Timra, and then we're going to let Mama Moshe join us uh, because both of them, when I talk to them, have had a similar kind of experience. Tell me about all of these people who you're running into. A lot of them are young who, who inside of them, they feel that they are the reincarnation of our ancestors, but uh, I enjoyed what you had, this, the insight that you are bringing to this. Would you please speak on it? Uh, greetings. My name is Tutamran Abu Sahu Keparu. And first, I'd like to say thank you for having me on your platform, number one. Uh, number two, um, I'd like to say that uh, I'd like to say how I'll talk about how you and I came to meet each other. Can I say that first? Oh, of course. Um, so, uh, Mr. Clemson Brown and I, we met via um, Dr. Oyibo, through a conversation with Dr. Oyibo, the mathematician. And Dr. Oyibo wanted me to uh, tell my story. He wanted uh, Mr. Brown, Clemson, uh, Minister Brown to hear my story. And upon hearing my story, I think uh, Minister Brown felt it to be true. Am I correct? That's correct. And so from there, him and I spoke some more and he recently came and received a massage from me. And, uh, and here I am now. Um, I'm writing a book. My book is called Tutumra, The Prophecy of Reincarnation. My book is about my many past lives. My oldest past life being Tutank Aten, also known as Tutank Amen or Tutank Amun or King Tut or the boy king, or the golden pharaoh, many different names. That's the oldest life that I'm aware of. And my most previous life was my life as Emmett Till, the boy murdered in 1955, sparking the civil rights movement. And as Minister Brown just expressed, many people are feeling like they've been here before. Like my book is going to entail Many of us have been here before. Some of us, it may be our first run, but this game of life is a cyclical thing that we're living over and over and over again. But it's like a shared dream that we're experiencing together. But to speak to the part where people feel like they're, I've never in my life before my revelation, and I'll get to explain and how it came to be that I knew and know who I am and who I was. But I'll say first that when my first life came to me, which was Emmett Till, after I presented that and started to share that with people, I started to meet people who felt like they had been here before 
and that they were people from the past. And most of these people were females and most of them felt like they were none other than Queen T, Pat Shed Soot, Nefertiti, Nefertari, Cleopatra, the list goes on from ancient Kemet. And since my life as Tutankhamun came to me on 4-4-2020, the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated, since that day, I have met many, maybe a dozen young men from 16 to 30. And even some, I've heard other people older have felt like they were King Tut. And I'm torn between two different emotions here. One emotion is I've never met anyone who felt like they were Emmett Till. Never felt anyone who felt like they were Emmett Till. However, there's so many people who feel like they were a pharaoh or a queen. No one was the baker, no one was the cook, and no one was, no one did anything else. Everyone was the pharaoh or the queen. And I think that uh, we missed a point. Um, my book is not about helping people to realize a past life or a previous life. I'm here to wake you up to the, 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 the reality of the immortality of the soul. That's true. So to wake you up, to, to free you from a bondage that's been given to you, to think that you only YOLO, you only live once. And if you die, you either go to heaven or hell. If you're a Christian, if you're a Muslim, you go to Jenna and Nirvana or all these other places that you go based on these boxes of religion. Instead, I want you to understand that you come back here again. So everything that you do is going to be, you're going to be facing it with a law of, of cause and effect, the law of, 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 of karma based upon your actions. You're going to have to pay for everything that you've done. So with that said, it is best for you to live a life that will, that will grant you a more prosperous return. And so essentially, this is, this is why the teachings of, of, of reincarnation were taken out of the biblical text, to trap you so that you could be beholden to a priest, a post, a, 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 a priest, a pope, an imam, or a rabbi, or some sort like that. You go to their church or their mosque, and you pay them tithes, and by living a good, righteous life, you could either go to heaven, you could hopefully go to heaven and not go to hell, you know? So, and there was a bracket and there's money involved in that for you paying into that belief system. But that is not the reality of what's really going on. So I spoke to that. Are there any things like else you'd like me to cover? Probably tell my story or, or did, did, that, did that answer your question? It did, but we, we also talked about the uh, corks and crystals and Oh, that, that stuff, uh, that was just random stuff. Uh, we were talking about cell phones and, and technology and, and not knowing how to operate a cell phone. And I was talking about how I once heard Baba Kalimbi Iyi, the master martial artist, in one of his lectures that, that I caught live. I went to see, I went to see Baba Kalimbi Iyi at a lecture in 2018 in October. Unfortunately, this grandmaster transitioned on, on April 10th, 2020. He transitioned, um, but in, in 2018, July, August, September, October, four months after I had my past life revelation of Emmett Till, I went to a lecture of his. I went to a lecture, it was at Nicholas Bookstore in Brooklyn. And we must have been in that lecture for like five, you, you can't find anything online from him that was more profound than what you'll get in a live presentation with him. Um, and he talked about many things. He, one of the biggest things he talked about was the, 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 the power of the magic mushroom, of the psychedelic magic mushroom. But to, to answer the point of what you were talking about, he mentioned these cell phones. He said, if there was some sort of catastrophic, catastrophic event that destroyed all technology and in, in most of the world population and 
And thousands of years later, people would dig up and find artifacts and they would find these phones. They would turn them on and they wouldn't know what to do with them, but they would think that they were these great pieces of equipment. But they would have no Wi-Fi and no way of using the technology. And he said that's very much just like a crystal, like this clear quartz, clear quartz crystal right here. This is technology that we can store information in. And, and I brought up the movie Superman. In the movie Superman, Superman had a crystal. He threw it into the snow. I think it was in Antarctica. And that's where Crystal City appeared. And he took his crystal and that's where he communicated with his father from that, from that city using the crystals. So these crystals that we use in all of our jewelry, sometimes we're wearing these things and we don't understand the actual power that this technology has. And so all the technology of the herbs and the medicines that are out here for us to utilize, instead we abuse them. We abuse them. We, we, we abuse the sacred tobacco. And we, we, we abuse it with cigarettes, with all these other chemicals that are in it. We abuse the sacred marijuana with all these other chemicals that are in it. And we, we abuse them and we use them as a daily, a daily a thing that we become addicted to. And we take it away from its natural, it, it, its, its, its divine purpose that it initially had for us. And so that's my spill on that. Yeah, but we were saying that these uh, crystals are in the, in everything that we use in our laptops. And, oh, and yes. They still. Yeah. Oh, they okay. still. <laughs> I kind of forgot that. Yeah, the crystals are, crystals are in the computers that we're using. They're in the cell phones. It's technology that we've forgotten how to use. And instead of and and, and to speak on another level because we're talking about, we're, we're making it about these laptops when it's really not about this. It's about what all of these things are inside of us. Sometimes you think of a person, you think of a person and they call you, you know? You dream of someone and then they call you. You know, I'm writing a book that has more to do with past lives. It has to do, it has more to do with awaking up the psychic abilities that are innate in all of us, innate in all of us, that are hidden, that are dormant, that are asleep inside of all of us. And so yes, we can use this crystal energy and put it inside of a laptop and send an email to someone. But to be honest, that is working back, all, the, all of this technology, if you ask me, is working backwards. They have technology that you can use for solar powered information to solar power your car and we don't spend time ourselves getting the solar power from the sun, being in the sun, sun gazing. These are the things that are going to awaken the energy within ourselves so that we, so, you know, there are many stories about the great adepts, Buddhas and stuff that been able to materialize their astral body from one, see right now, we're talking over this computer right now. So in ancient time and even present day, there are people who can transport their astral body to another person without using this technology. And these are the things that we should be focusing on. These are the gifts and talents that we should be putting our minds on. As a man thinketh, so is he. The first time that I ever said to a woman over the phone, I said, meet me in a dream. And we hung up and we went to sleep and we woke up from a dream that we both remembered. So that is not something that is commonly talked about or commonly understood to be as a reality. Share dreaming. You know, dreaming things before they happen. So these are the many things that, as I'm writing my book, it's not just about my past lives and about me claiming to be this person or that person. In my book, I'm going to talk about my oldest life of Tutankhamen, my most previous life, of Emmett Till, but all the lives in between, and then this life and this body, what I did in this life, because I wasn't always this dude that you see in front of me. I always looked like him, but I was not always the person that I am now. Deep in the recesses of who I am, I always wanted to be, but I wasn't that person. It was in my heart, but I wasn't that person. There were things that I needed to do to manifest that, to transmute that. To become that scarab, 
becoming, transformation, the things that I needed to do to realize that inside myself. And so, yeah, this crystal is a good thing to talk about, but we have to we have to open up the crystals that are hidden without it, within us. We have jewels and organs inside of us and glands with that inside of us that we need to awaken and charge and to utilize because this is this is working backwards with this with this device right here they track you everywhere you go but with this body right here we have power over it i wear a feather not just because i'm cherokee and blackfoot i wear the feather because of my art to keep the heart lighter than a feather but there's an ancient saying that the natives knew or the natives saw the white man come before he came how could that happen well, because dreaming was a major part of our practice. There were the dreamers. You had the uh, you had the medicine doctor, right? You had the the, the herbalist, right? The medicine. Doctor. Then you also had the dreamer. You had the warriors. You had the dreamers. They they came together, part of the ritualistic day, and they talked about the dreams that they had, because you can dream things before they happen. Uh, Sister Moshe. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, no. Um, John us, please. I'm here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was hoping that you and the brother would have uh, a conversation together. Um, I wanted you to uh, co-host the program because I know a little of your background and I talk with you all the time. And uh, I know you could comprehend uh, what he's saying. So it, it, you're the co-host. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you, um, Daddy Brown, for allowing yourself to be a vessel that the ancestors in the cosmos will bring these two kindred spirits together. So greetings. Um, I don't see him in I the. Can't see you either. I can't. <laughs> now I can see. Yes. Oh, okay. So, um, Tutmra Kempera. 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 Okay. That's going to be a mouthful for me right now, <laughs> but I'll try to do the best I can. But I can definitely to relate to everything you're seeing um, due to the fact that. You know, I didn't sit by anyone's um, knee or I wasn't sitting in a classroom for information to give me knowledge about ancestrals. Um, and I wasn't just taught, I wasn't taught from a book. You know, I was at home minding my own business. I wasn't thinking about no ancestors or no um, what they call G-O-D. I wasn't looking for no G-O-D and I definitely wasn't living for no G-O-D. So when the ancestors decided to awaken my first eye, uh, which is my mind of divine consciousness, um, they did it without the props of anything um, physical being present. So the communication um, through the divine spirit um, that connects who created my mind, um, also awakened my mind and brought my attention to those things that was not serving my highest and my greatest good because of the lifestyle um, I was living. So that was the first thing that they had to remove. They didn't send me to a, a religious um, house um, you know, so I can be indoctrinated. Um, they knew what I needed. Um, so they did it like what they call in a twinkling of an eye. Mm. Now, um, to make a long story short, just being able to recognize that our ancestors' DNA flow through um, our bloodstream and the offices and council and the positions of all of our um, ancestors that were um, part of the divine light of consciousness being the light to the world and whatever generation um, that we find ourselves awakened in, we are the sequel of that office. 
especially in such a time as this, because we recognize that there's a cosmic um, paradigm shift. The shift is not to um, perpetuate or to propel us into something new, but to propel us into renewing our status that we had before, because it was perfect um, from the beginning. And it will also be perfect in the end, in the fall of this current reign, but it would be reestablished through the offices and divine consciousness, as you said. Um, and then I have said as well that, um, you know, being a, a scribe or being a healer or being a priestess or a priest or um, a leader, where they call it kings or queens or just the leadership of being able to be that portal of divine consciousness is well needed. And we don't have to look to the system um, to validate what we can come to a conclusion of who we are, but to have the knowledge and not to be able to um, uh, apply it so we can manifest the fruit from it is where we need to find ourselves actually listening for the purpose of manifesting. And with that, for now, I'm complete. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Brother Tutimra, um, you know, my, my, my whole focus right now is I've had two really heavy shootings right in my house, uh, in front of my house over the past two weeks. And it's the young young brothers. Um, I, I, you know, they say it's all this game warfare, and but uh, I thought we needed to deal with it. And if we could somehow get them, the young people, to understand uh, that they are being mind controlled, they're killing each other because this is the way the system has taught them, has, has uh, embedded in them this whole concept of gangs and killing, and but they don't know who they are. And if you don't know who you are, then you are subject to be controlled by your enemy who wants you to think that you are nothing and nobody and uh, you need to be killing each other because that's all you, that's what you do. You, you form gangs and shoot up each other. But I think a lot of this is being manipulated. And one of the things that I think that if we can get to our youth, and I want to ask you uh, your opinion on how we get to our youth. How do we change uh, their view of themselves and some of the uh, some of the teachings. I know you were telling me that you went through uh, the martial arts and uh, and I think every every young person, every brother and sister who has a child, a boy, whether it's a boy or a girl, should send them to some form of martial arts uh, because it builds self confidence, it builds respect for one another. Uh, and there, most of the brothers that I know that teach martial arts also are teaching history, their history. And uh, so I wanted to get your insight and your opinion of how, uh, because you came through a lot of this yourself. You spent the time in the service, you, you know, and so forth. So uh, how do you think we can apply the knowledge that is here to get it to our young people, because they 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 um, they are respect for one another, and especially the elders, and their attention span is just out of the window. Uh, what are, what are some of the things you think we could do to help them? Well, I'll say right now the time is one one one. The time is one eleven. I just thought that was interesting as I looked at the clock. One one one. And I'll say this, um, I grew up in Farrakh, I was born in Farrakhaway, Queens. And, and 
Rockaway Queens, when I grew up, it was violent. I think Edgemere had the highest death rate, you know? And I didn't grow up in the projects per se. I can't see you anymore. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. I'll bring us back. All right, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel like I'm talking to myself that way. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, not a problem. I, I just like to do a big screen because people can see you clear and large. Um, and speaking of violence, there's something called personal. I'm, I'm a personal trainer. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a comedic yoga instructor. I'm a massage therapist. I also, you know, I'm a Tai Chi instructor, but I don't much teach Tai Chi. But I'll say this. In my training, in all of those, personal responsibility is key. Personal responsibility. Because from a child, from when you were little, you've learned what's wrong. And you learn what is right. And inside of you, there's an intuition and a feeling of knowing when you're doing something wrong. So all of us know what is right and we know what is wrong. You know, in some instances, people don't, right? But for the most part, we know what is right and we know what is wrong. I say that because I grew up in Far Rockaway, Queens, and I never wanted to be a person that did something. I, I kind of always felt that there was this, I didn't know it. I didn't have anyone to teach me. I didn't, I grew up, came, I, my coming of age was in the 90s. I was a teenager in the 90s. And in the 90s, you had people like Bobby Hemmett speaking, speaking, C. Freeman L. speaking, um, Dr. Ben, Dr. Dr. Clark. All of them I never heard about. Khaled Muhammad, I never heard about them in my youth. I never, ever heard about, I didn't hear about them until technology age. I never heard those men speak that I know of now. I had never heard of a Francis Cress Welsing, but still inside of me, I had I'd heard, I think when I was 16, I heard for the first time Malcolm X speak, Malcolm X said the, 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 the Ballad of the Bullet. I remember listening to that whole take cassette over and over again. And the one thing that read, that rang from me from that speech was that they don't kill you because you're Muslim. They don't kill you because you're Christian. They kill you because you're Black. I, that was enough. I understood the scenario of what I was in. I didn't understand how it all fit together. I didn't understand how it was, it was systematic within school, within prisons, within law, within medical, within food. I didn't know all of that, but I knew enough to know that I would, didn't want to do something wrong to some, that somebody that looked like me. That was enough for me. I would never, so the rule is each person, you have to have it, you have to have a, an, an, an innate love for the person next to you. Mm -hmm. You know, as you remember, as you see what was happened to, happening to us as a people. But I'll, I'll, I'll also switch to this because you're, you're, you are a minister and we also know that when we go to church, when a person goes to church, they sing for about 45 minutes to an hour. And they get you nice and warm. And that person is playing the organ, which mm -hmm. incidentally is the same word as the different organ centers in your body that are connected to chakras, which are like crystals, right? Mm -hmm. They're playing these organs to get you emotionally roused up, right? And then mm -hmm. the pastor come and tell you one little thing about Jesus Christ and people are just wailing and just giving out their times and offering and, and feeling good. Now, that's what we're talking about, music. Music, right? So the study of music and, and the number one music today is hip hop. It is the music that we are attracted to. And music is very much can be a religion, just like sports can be a religion, you know? Mm -hmm. So it, it, a lot has to do with the food that we feed ourselves. And food is more than just the food. Food is the music. Food is the actors. Food is, the, food is whatever you give your attention to. Mm -hmm. And even the word attention, A-T-E-N, in ancient Kemet, 
My name was Toot Unk Aten. Aten. That's what the word attention, right? Page four, March. Attention. The word attention to get your attention. The Aten was the sun in the sky. Mm -hmm. The sun. Yes. Mm -hmm. The word attention. What are we giving our attention to? That's how we pay. We pay with our attention. And so mm -hmm. you, my heart goes out when I think, when you said that, that, that you had two murders in front of your house. In front no, of your I mean, over 20 shots. 20 shots. Yeah. You know, that, that bothers me. That bothers me because there is a, uh, there's an agenda out here to keep the music derogatory where you can hear out of your car radio Mother Effa, fuck you, suck this, pussy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everything mm -hmm. on the radio followed by the word nigga, 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 nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, so it is what we allow ourselves to pay attention to. These young people, they have more so than ever, the gift and the curse, because this thing right here, whatever you want to pay attention to, you got, I've met many different types of young, young brothers, Minister Brown. I've met, I've met some really sharp ones. Yes. I've met some sharp 15, 16 year olds, some sharp ones that they remind me of myself, but better. <laughs> mm. They remind me of what I wanted to because I didn't have someone to teach it to me. Like I didn't, I didn't know about the, I didn't have anyone to bring me to Dr. Ben back then. Mm. I didn't have anyone to bring me to a, a, a Clemson Brown. I didn't have someone to bring me to that information. What I had, which was good enough at the time was Tupac because <laughs> Tupac was my Malcolm X, you know, because I could hear in his music that he loved black people, that he loved, one of my favorite songs, uh, uh, they got me trapped in the city of delusion. Happiness living on the streets is, delu is a delusion. Even a smooth criminal one day must get caught. Shut up or shut down with the bullet that he bought. Nine millimeter kicking, thinking about what the streets do to me. We were never taught peace in the black community. All we know is violence through the job and silence. Walking city streets like a rat pack of tyrants. Too many brothers daily headed to the big pen. Brothers coming out worse off than when they went in. Over the years, I've done a lot of growing up, getting drunk, throwing up, cuffed up. Then I said I had enough. There's got to be another route way out to money and fame. I changed my name, played a different game. Tired of being trapped in this vicious cycle. If one more cop harasses me, I just might go psycho. And when I get him, I hit him with the bum rush. Only a lunatic would like to see a skull crust. So if you're smart, you really let me go, G. Catch, keep me cooped up in this ghetto and catch the Uzi. That was Tupac trapped. Those lyrics, though, you know? Mm, yeah. You know, yeah. listening yeah. to the... So we choose what we want to listen to, though. We choose what we want to give our attention to. So as much of... Just as much as it, there is a, a design system for us to fail, it is our responsibility to not fail. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So the young people... The, the young brothers, they have to decide. They have to decide. And they have more than enough scholars out here teaching. We got memes. We got social networking. It's out there. So they have to choose, though. I make music myself. It's positive. And I'll tell you what. I don't, I never wrote a, a negative rhyme. I don't write negative music. And I'll tell you, just from somebody that creates positive stuff, it, it, you'd be hard-pressed to get somebody to share your, your music when it's positive. They more pre they more likely want to want to share things that are negative, you know. So this is yeah. how, you know, a, a, a lot of it is personal responsibility. Uh, yeah. Personally, what I think. Correct. Yes. What do you think yeah, about? I can, I can definitely um, relate. Um, when the ancestors took me on a journey. They put me inside of a cave. Well, I had a quite maybe like three different um, experiences when it comes to caves. But just starting off with the music, because the laws of the universe also 
gives us the principles of rhythm and vibration. And when you have a people who study you and they realize that we're very spiritual people um, divinely connected to um, the earth as well as the cosmos, then that's the reason why they try to take us off balance with the rhythms and the vibrations of the universe and of, of nature. And, you know, to find um, people among ourselves that are so willing to um, disgrade, um, degrade um, our people for uh, a few dollars that are only temporary for a while they use you and exploit you and have plans to demise you as they continue to mistreat us, you know. Um, but inside the cave, um, I remember I couldn't see the face, but there was a figure that was dressed in all white. And it was a man's voice. Um, well, I'm thinking because I have some been told I have a deep voice. And when I talk on the phone, some people get it mistaken as masculine instead of feminine. But nevertheless, um, this voice told me, um, if I listen to music, listen to nature. And so that right there, considering somebody who was into my, um, my reggae, I never really could connect to rap, um, but I have listened to it. Um, even when I was dancing, I chose like, um, uh, I guess you would say indigenous um, beats like the drum, um, rather in this land or from the motherland, I would always connect to the drumming beats and I like the flute. Now what we do have in common, um, Tutumra Kimpura, <laughs> I'm hoping I'm saying that correctly, <laughs> I'm trying, um, is Blackfoot. I have that on my mother's side and my daddy's side. But on my daddy's side is also from an African culture of Zulu and Mozambique. Um, but nevertheless, um, we do have that in common as far as the Blackfoot. And I've also been told um, Chikata. I don't know if you ever um, heard of that. But when I woke up this morning and I was trying to get myself together, I was told to wear my feather of my eye. And then I was like, well, I can't put on my feather of my eye and have my head covering at the same time. And let's say I'm going to wear, uh, create a band where I can actually put it on and have my, um, my eye feather. I did wear it on Daddy Brown platform, I think once or twice. Um, but the spirit spoke to me and told me to wear my, my, my eye. Um, so I, I can relate to that. But that at the same time, as far as the youth is concerned, yes, they have scholars among them. Now, see, I wasn't um, familiar with the um, the Jane Smalls and the, um, uh, well, all of the ones that were programmed um, in the, uh, the trailer before we come on. I never heard any of them. I never read any of their books. I, I was not familiar because the ancestors were leading and guiding to me um, and teaching me what was relevant and significant for me at this time. Um, and I also noticed those who are still among us are also increasing in knowledge because even they have admitted that the youth are doing even more research than they had access to, though it's all available to us now because of this tool, this device um, that we're using. Um, at the same time, they are teachers among each other. Now, the youth, when I go to them and I'm in their presence, I don't come in and, and go in as if I'm the teacher. I go in as, uh, well, like the mother of the village, and that is to nurture and to care for, um, to counsel, um, whatever it is that they need that they might not necessarily be getting from home or what they need just to be recognized that they are significant and relevant and they are an asset because they are present. Um, but at the same time, because the things that I do know I reveal it to them freely. Um, and they have to 
want to. They have the desire um, to want more because you you can pretty much tell if they were ready to receive you within five minutes, uh, especially when we're living in a time that if you're foolish, it's now time to become wise. And if you don't even recognize that, then you're seeing and, you know, pr pretty much do what they call um, to deaf ears. And if you're um, immature, it's also time to become mature. And if they're not recognizing that either. But they have, I tell them that old age and gray hair is not what gives you wisdom. Um, because in all actuality, wisdom um, comes from experience. And when you experience and you learn from it, then you have can make divine um, choices that will be beneficial of uh, contributing to sustaining and maintaining life. Wisdom also can come from um, the master teachers of nature, you know, but you have to have eyes to see and perceive and ears to hear and understand. Um, because when I'm on my journey, that's one of the main things I have to be in touch with is the spirits of the, the earth because they are the master teachers. They are the ones who lead and guide when we don't have uh, a voice of reason who are divinely connected to lead and guide in places of darkness. Then the light comes forth from the trees. The lights come forth from the ants. The lights come forth from the birds and um, two-legged, four-legged, no-legged um, creatures and even winged creatures because I needed them when I was on my journey, barefoot, walking, and did not know where I was going, but I knew I was being guided by the, um, the spirit. And so um, the youth, even we have to go to them and not talk at them, but talk with them. Um, because their voice is significant and is worthy to be heard. You know, um, I, in the beginning, had a very uh, issue with um, a lot of the vocabulary that they use. But even in their awakening, because I used to have a filthy, filthy, filthy mouth. But <laughs> just like that, you know, the divine spirit uh, took that away because that wasn't very becoming. You know, so I expected all those who said that they were conscious to also display that type of characteristic shift, but not everyone does that. But the spirit had to let me also know that, you know, whatever, wherever a place a person is in their status of consciousness, they are able to actually be a light to somebody who needs to be in the position they're at, but they still have to be able to. Um, grow in their divine consciousness. So whatever you were doing yesterday, um, to be able to say you're learning something new every day, you just don't learn it. You have to apply it in order to manifest it, in order to be fruitful um, from it. So I, I can relate to you so much. And I would like to just literally talk back and forth. I have a lot of questions for you. Um, like, for instance, um, when you became um divinely conscious of of what it is that you can connect to of your spirit uh, and your soul your office of who it is that you are today how do you see you implementing that into a position today that you can actually be successful in um contributing to our reparations, restoration, and redemption, not from a political or religious perspective, but from a cultural upliftment? That's a good question, because uh, as I was listening to you talk, what's the, what rung out was how, um, I was looking at the chat here, and some guy, some guy named Tyrone Bailey said, I found it's funny, he said, he said, this dude, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poem, he said at, at 1 p.m., 31 minutes ago, he said, did he say he is King Tut? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I said, but I didn't just say that. Let me just answer his question first, because it ties into exactly what you're, you're saying. That's exactly what I said. I did not stutter. My oldest life, my name was Tutank Aten, also known as Tutank Amen, Tutank Amun, 
All right, the boy king, king tut, king two, however you want to say it. That's my oldest life, okay? My most recent life is Emmett Till. Emmett Lewis Till, born on July 25th, 1941, the year of the snake. In this body, I was born again. 22 years after murdered, the same year my mother was born, on October 25th, 1977, the year of the snake, okay? I can tell you my whole story. You know, it's going to be all up in my book. But my book is not just about my past lives. Let's go back to what she said about even the, the trees will speak out. Like you just said, right? I remember mm -hmm. sitting on a bench a few years ago and the squirrel taught me something because the squirrel jumped right in front of me. And you know what the squirrel did? <laughs> even, even the ancestors agree with me. That's going to fall off the wall. That wasn't necessarily off the wall, but that was my, but listen, the squirrel reached around its back and it scratched itself. And I said, wow, that squirrel will never lose its flexibility. That squirrel, no matter how much we take the natural way away from it, its habitat, its habitat away, it will not take, it, it, it will not lose its balance. And speaking right. of balance, I saw, I saw a, a squirrel fall out of a tree, very high, hit the concrete, bounce up, and walk away. So speaking to that, let's speak to you, let's answer your question. Earlier in this conversation, we were speaking about, and, and one of the things I didn't touch on, you wanted me to reiterate some of the things I spoke about. We are in, a, in an age of information where all of these elders that we can speak of that have been speaking this metaphysics and, and, and consciousness, these young people and, and even the old people who missed it, they can take this computer and cell phone and they can start to take this information in and listen to it, which I did. I binged. I, you know how people binge watch net? I binged nine hours of Bobby Hammett, nine hours of Phil Valentine, hours and hours of e C C Freeman L. Ben, Dr. Ben, Khalid Muhammad, all of it. Francis Quest Welsing, Jewel Pukrum, taking this up, buying books, reading it. Let me not lose my train of thought. The point I want to make is that at some point we can lose our way because knowledge without wisdom can be dangerous. Because when you take in a lot of knowledge, I meet these young people, especially the young ones who, I mean, I never ever thought a little bit about me. I don't want to make it about me, but you asked me a question. It is just coming from my vessel and who I am. I was an athlete. I wasn't the average athlete. That's not who I was. I was the fastest guy on my every team that I ever played for. Why is that important? Because speed is important. Speed dictates how your body runs, right? It dictates the speed, the speed of light, energy, speed. I was, I was, I was athletic. I scored all the touchdowns. That's the type, that's what shaped my personality, being an athlete. I will be 44 this year. People don't believe that I am my age all the time until I start talking. I was a soldier. I was not the yeah. average soldier, soldier of the month, soldier of the quarter, soldier of the year. I got out the army. I prayed on a decision to get out. And my last day in the army was Martin Luther King's birthday, January 15, 2005. My grandfather died August 18, 2009. That sparked my transition. He died of cancer he, just a couple of days ago. My grandfather passed the day after Marcus Garvey's birthday. Um, my mm -hmm. grandfather, General Dukes Jr., was born June 17th, the day after Tupac's birthday, 1931. He died at the age of 79. His death would spark me. It would make me start reading. I used to be a man. See, this is important. This is the, my book is about my past lives, but it's not just about my past lives. It's about what I did to have that bestowed upon me. It is not something that you just listen to some lectures and you have a dream, you have this feeling because you studied Kemet that, oh, wow, I'm Thutmose. That's not how it happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> Many people to tell me that, that they people in past lives, I don't believe them. And it's hard. And, and, and I, I know that's kind of like uh, ironic that I'm sitting here telling you who I was, yet I don't, I'm sorry. 
based upon what happened to me and how it was given to me. And I also have to understand that, that not everybody receives things the same. And so I have to humble a little bit, understand that. It's not all about the way that things were revealed to me. But something this magnitude, you know, I think that there's going to be some sort of a revelation that comes with it. You know, so how can how can what I'm experiencing work for me or work for the people in this day and time? I mentioned the sun earlier. And how can it work? They can use my story as an example. Much of the music is going to is going to gear people towards money, clothes, and hoes, especially us men, right? You know, so I was very much a person as a trainer, a young trainer in the gym, was about making a lot of money and chasing every pretty female that I could catch. When my grandfather passed away, that was a shock for me. I started to study health and wellness. I was very fast, like I said, I have never not had a six pack, but there was a time that I had a six pack, but I couldn't vacuum my stomach in. I couldn't suck my stomach in because all of the stomach, all the food in my colon was hard. I was a meat eater. I was a paste eater. I was a sugar eater. I was unhealthy. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Although I looked very healthy, I was not, all right? So I started to change the way that I ate. Dr. Dr. Lila Africa, Dr. Sabi. I started to consume this information, but more than consume it, I started to apply it. I started to fast. I started to exercise more. Then I started to do yoga. I, 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 I became a massage therapist. I went to school to become a massage therapist. But what I'm gearing towards is that squirrel and that squirrel reaching behind its back that I mentioned earlier, and it didn't lose its flexibility. I took, I signed up for a comedic yoga course in 2018. And here's something important. All of these things that I'm talking about will be in my book. The book comes out next year. It's called Tutumra, the Prophecy of Reincarnation. It comes out 100 years after my tomb was discovered, 1922, which happens to be the same year that Louis Till, Emmett Till's father, my previous father in another life was born. February 7th, 1922, Louis Till, who was a soldier who was murdered by the military in 1943. So I signed up for a comedic yoga course, but why did I take the course? This is important because I started to follow the signs. I noticed that my course had eight course days, eight days, four weekends, Saturday and Sundays, eight hour classes. The first weekend was April 21st, and April 22nd. The next weekend, month later, was May 19th and May 20th, then June 16th, June 17th, then June 30th and July 1st. So I noticed that May 19th was Malcolm X's birthday. May 20th was Toussaint Louboutin's birthday. One of the leaders of the Haitian Revolution was Jean-Jacques Dessalines. June 16th was Tupac's birthday. June 17th was my grandfather's birthday. June 30th was a friend from high school. That was her sister's birthday. And July 1st was her birthday. So six out of the eight days, it was something significant. I knew that there was a sign for me to take the course. So I took the course. And after taking Saturday, eight hours, and Sunday, eight hours, I decided to fast. I was 40 years old. I fasted for 20 days, only drinking water while taking my comedic yoga course. And on the day that I graduated, through a divine series of events, my life as Emmett Till was revealed to me. Two years later, on 4-4-2020, my life as Tutankhamen was revealed to me. How does this help? Because really, it's not about us getting reparations here. It's about us freeing our soul. And each person, just like I spoke about those young brothers earlier, personal responsibility. The only way that you are going to be free is to free yourself spiritually. And you have to do that from going inside yourself. You have to, you have to overstand what you understand so that you can understand your own godhood. You have to overstand what you understand so that you can understand your own godhood. 
the immortality of who you are. You know, so I think that is is how the biggest thing, the biggest way that we can utilize what have I what I what I've experienced for today. And, and, and by going the inward path, like I say, my book, even though it's titled Two Tim Rather Prophecy of Reincarnation, is not a, 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 a self guide to finding a previous life. No. It, it is a guide for you to find whatever it is that you agreed to realize when you agreed to come. Well, it's, it's for you to find what you agreed to do when you came here. Because we all consciously come here. We just forget when we get here from the foods that we intake, from the conditioning that we get from our family, from the air, from the water, from all of these things, from the music, from the cartoons, all of these things that adulterate us and take us away from the divine being. You won't, you'd be so surprised. If you, if you ask little babies when they first start talking, Alex, if you got a baby in front of you right now, you go and ask them where they come from. You start asking them simple questions like that. Who are you? Or oh, this is what you might want to ask someone. Can I tell you another quick story? Yes, by all means. I met a brother in Detroit last year. He told me a story about his little daughter. He told me that he had went to a lecture, and in the lecture, they told them to ask the babies where they came from, to ask the babies, where do you come from? So he went home, and he asked his little baby that was in the crib, where, you, where do you come from? Who are, who are you? And the baby was holding on to the crib, and the baby was being a baby. And the baby, and he, I don't remember the baby's name. He said, who are you? Where do you come from? And the baby, after a while, the baby stopped. And the baby, the little baby put her hand on her hip and said, well, I used to wear a red dress and I used to do this and I used to do, and the voice was different. I used to do this and I used to do that. And then the mother came walking in the room and said, who is that talking? And the, 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 the father was in shock. And he looked at the baby and said, it, it is her. And the baby went back to being a baby again. I have a friend of mine who, when she was 10 years old, her mother passed away. Mm. The, the, father was, the father was baby. So her, my friend's mother passed away. My friend had a baby girl. The baby girl was about two or three years old. The baby girl was with her grandfather, my, my friend's father. So the, so the grandfather was babysitting the baby girl, his granddaughter. They were in a car and a song came on. And the song came on, his granddaughter looked at him and said, do you remember when we used to sing this song and dance together? And he looked at the girl, the baby, his granddaughter, and he went to his daughter later and said, did you tell her about this song? And the daughter said, no. And my friend said, no. The song that the baby was talking about was this song that him and his dead wife, his transitioned wife, used to sing and dance to together. So what mm -hmm. I'm talking to you about is there is a, a, a law of rebirth that we don't remember that has been taken out of the Western consciousness, out of the African consciousness. But if you go to India, they're always talking about babies who remember a previous life. Now, I would not lie to you. I don't remember my life as Emmettil, and I don't ever want to really remember the end of the life. I don't want that memory. I don't remember the life of Tutankhamen. But sometimes when I'm reading the books about that time, I have weird feelings of deja vu. The name Tutan Ra, I did not pick that name. That name was echoing in my ear on 4-4-2020 when I came back from a deep meditation. As I was meditating on 4-4-2020, which is the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated, I woke up from a meditation. Let me tell you how to, what happened in the meditation. In the meditation, before I laid down, let me tell you the whole meditation. I took 10 grams of magic mushrooms. Wow. I, I kind of don't want to, that's going to be in my book. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to 
I don't want to confuse people by thinking that if they take a psychedelic, let me, let me also tell you this. I'll be 44 this year. I didn't drink alcohol till I was 21. I didn't smoke weed till I was 33. Okay. So I understand that we live in a day and age where everyone's looking to get high. Everyone wants to get high. I never needed to smoke cigarettes or smoke weed in high school. I didn't do that because I was getting a high on the football field. I could not be touched on a football field. And if you don't understand it, every person that you give your energy to, like LeBron James, like Michael Jordan, like every one of these people, Mike Tyson, every one of these athletes, those, those sprinters who just won the sprints in, in Olympics, every one of those people, when they are doing what they are doing, they are experiencing it in slow motion. They are experiencing it. You are seeing it at real time. That is not how they are experiencing it. They are experiencing it from a high created from chemicals inside the body, which is similar to when you have adrenaline running when you're in fear for your life. So I never needed to get high off of drugs. Therefore, I never did. I didn't smoke weed till I was 33 when I was going through a depression. And it served its purpose for me for five years until I had to, to, to rid myself of it because of two things made me think. Page 88 of Dr. Layola Africa's book, African Holistic Health. And on page 88, it's, it has marijuana in it. And it talks about how marijuana, the, the, the droplets of it, when you smoke burnt marijuana, it is cancerous to the body and it disassociates the spirit guiding effect on the body. And it is not good. It, it, it lowers the sperm quality and sperm count. It, it, it really is not, it's not good for the body when you abuse it the way people do. So when we talk about something like a psychedelic, though, a psychedelic mushroom, people always, people taking these things and they're abusing them. These are sacred plants and sacred medicines that people are abusing. So I don't want to give you the idea that you can abuse something, okay? But if you go and you Google Mike Tyson and Bufo, B-U-F-O, Mike Tyson smoked the venom of the toad. And after smoking the venom of the toad, he stopped sniffing cocaine. He stopped abusing drugs. And he started to be a better husband to his wife. He understood that, that, that there was a bigger thing than this thing that he understood. It changed him who created this metaphysical Mike Tyson. So back to what I was saying, I took 10 grams of mushrooms. Then I ran on my treadmill for 25 minutes. See, it's not about what you do. See, you can do, you can follow everything that I just tell you to do, but if your intentions are not true, then the doors will not open for you. You can't take some, you're not going to get something just because you take something. You have to earn something. You understand? These things are here to help you. They help to, to they help to open the veil that's here, so you can see something more that, that's that's already here. The dimension is right in front of you. Your ancestor is standing right there watching you do the dumps that you do. Yes. Your guardians. Every person has at least one guardian. I have way more than one guardian. I have a lot. That doesn't mean that I'm. You know, bulletproof? No. But I got a lot of guardians, and I know that to be true. Mm -hmm. But everybody has at least one. You understand? So I took the 10 grams. I ran on the treadmill for 25 minutes. Let me tell you why I did that. Because I had an experience like a year prior where I took a mushroom and I ran home. And when I ran home, I got in the mirror, and I looked in the mirror, and my face was not my face. My face was some some Native American Indian man, uh, and it, it freaked me out. But I understood that the Aztecs, the Aztecs and in, in, in the natives, the Native Africans that we call Indians that were here, that we took these, we took peyote, we took the mescaline and the peyote, we took this stuff and we played, we played lacrosse, and we we even went to hunt, and we went to combat under these with this stuff here. You understand? So I ran on my treadmill for 10 minutes to get my blood flowing. 
But see, I wasn't doing what people do with these things. I wasn't seeking a high. I went on 4-4-2020, the day that Martin Luther King was assassinated. Remember, I prayed and asked for direction whether I should stay in the army or get out. I was going to stay in. I was going to be Ranger. I was going to be Special Forces. I was going to be Airborne, Air Assault. I was in a Special Ops unit. They had, they, they had recruited me there. I was going to stay there. But for the first time in my life, I prayed and asked God to give me direction. And I followed for the first time what I thought was a sign. And just coincidentally, my last day in the Army was Martin Luther King's birthday. And when I realized that I was Emmett Till and Emmett Till rose to prominence because of the murder of Emmett Till and he was born in the year of the snake, 1929. Yeah. I, I find him, to, I have more reverence for him than I ever did before. I appreciate him more because it was my murder. It was the murder of my previous life that rose him to prominence, Martin Luther King. So on 4-4-2020, I laid down after, after ingesting 10 grams of mushroom and I laid on my back on the floor, just like this, with eye covers over my eyes and sheets over me on my floor, right in the, on the floor that I'm laying on right now. And I closed my eyes and my whole body was vibrating. And I started to send my love and adoration as I can feel my skull vibrating, energy flowing from me. I started to send my love and adoration to Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. Then I started to send my love and, my, and adoration to my grandmother, who was the oldest person, the matriarch of my family, then my mother, all of my sisters, all of my aunts, all of my nieces, every woman in my family. And I ended with my, my youngest niece, the youngest female in my family. And as soon as I released my thoughts from my niece, then I'm laying, I'm no longer in my room. I am my, I'm, I'm in a place that you might want to call the Akashic Records, in another dimension somewhere. Because now I'm laying in a sarcophagus. And to my left, at my foot to my left is Rosa Parks. At my foot to the right is Martin Luther King. Rosa Parks comes in and kisses me on the cheek. When she kisses me on the cheek, I raise up out the sarcophagus that we call the Karast. I raised up out of it just like that. And I open my eyes. And when I open my eyes, now I'm back here on my floor. And in my ear, to Tamra, to Tamra, to Tamra. I knew who I was. And I called my friend Basui and I asked him what to Tamra meant because I hadn't been studied, studying the metal netter like I had needed to. And he told me it meant in the image of Ra. I didn't know what that name meant. If you Google it, you will not find it on the internet. It is nowhere in recorded history, not on a glyph, not on a wall, not on nobody's name. I didn't create the name. It was given to me. It's echoing in my ear. Tutan Ra, it means in the image of Ra. Tut Unk Aten means in the living image of Aten. Aten and Ra are the same thing. I was given the same name. It is a new name. Everybody who thinks they're King Tut, all they do is take the name Tut. They are King Tut, 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 Tut. And it's not Tut, it's Toot. Toot is how you pronounce it. So I'm sorry to go off on a tangent right there. Sometimes I can get a little bit uh, excited about what I'm saying. But to speak on the mushroom, it's not something that you abuse. And to speak on the mushroom, Tutank Aten's father is Akhenaten. Akhenaten is the biblical Moses. Moses is the story in the Bible where he says in 1614, eat the round caps that come after morning dew. A round cap is a mushroom. In the book of John, it says that I am the living bread sent down from heaven. Anyone who shall eat of me will have immortal life. That is a, that it is a mushroom. That is a spore sent down to heaven from a meteorite or comet came to this earth, it is an extraterrestrial being. It is smarter than you are and it is here to help you. But if you abuse it, it would not the, the, knock and it shall be opened onto you. Ask and it shall receive. But if you will not earn something, nothing will be given to you. So I just want to, 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 to qualify that so that people don't take that and run go run and think that they're going to, to um, receive some divine message that they haven't earned. Everything must be earned. Mm. Yes. Yes, my brother. We are almost at the end of our hour. 
but I wanted uh, my sister to respond uh, and, and give us a close. By the way, can we have you back? Minister Brown, let me respond to one thing. Okay. This guy, in a, he said, Moses is not a real person. Let me just speak to that real quick. The name Miss means to be born of. Mm -hmm. The Miss that they're talking about is Thut Miss, Thut Moses, Jehuti Miss, Jehuti Miss. This is the person that they fashioned the story of King David from. All right? Mm -hmm. So you're right. The person from the Bible that they call Moses is not a real person. The person they fashioned the story Moses afterwards was Akhenaten. Aken, Amenhotep IV changed this name to Akhenaten. Moses, you're right. This is a fictional creation from Akhenaten, who, was, who went away from the Amen Ra priesthood, who venerated the Aten, who created Akit Aten, Aten on the horizon in the Armana period. You're right, brother. You're very right. But you need to study more, all right? You need to study more. Study who the pharaohs were, the Nesutbidis were that they created and stole these stories from. All this information will be in my book. And I want to also end by saying this. And I know, and I'll give it to Mama Moshe. Um, I'm not a person that stepped up one day and said, oh, I'm a pharaoh. I do not... That just happens to be my oldest life. They say that heavy is the head that wears the crown. It is a hard thing to realize in a world where everyone is asleep. Here I am today knowing exactly who I am and not even a person in my own family believes. So the fact that you don't doesn't bother me because I'm doing a divine work. I will probably be here again, but my work in this life is to try to leave here and not have to come back. I'd rather be doing what Harriet is doing on the other side. I'd rather work through the spirit because I do not want to come back here crying through another wound, having to remember again and being forced to take some vaccination upon birth here. You understand? Mm -mm. And yeah. I'm done. <laughs> yes. So relatable. Yes, but so much uniqueness in our own divine essence. Um, considering that I did used to drink and smoke and all that other stuff, um, when the divine spirit um, changed my way of thinking, what's ever in your mind, your body has to eventually follow. So when the divine showed me those things that weren't beneficial for me, in order for me to actually truly stand on truth, then that truth had to remain even if I might not be in agreement to it. Because addiction is um, a, a stronghold and it can be a stumbling block. But if you truly believe the visitation that you receive from your ancestors, as well as um, the divine spirit, it's kind of like a... For in my instance, the first thing they had to do was reach in for that inner child, the um, the unapologetic inner cosmic child, the one that came here with not only as an innocence, but a relevance that makes and confirms your reality that whatever you do, you're a teacher, but when you lose track of teaching, then that inner essence of the cosmic energy is to teach and lead and guide you. So when the ancestors um, revealed to me that they have removed all of those urges, all those stumbling blocks, all those strongholds, the type of experiences that I have experienced were nothing but divinely spiritual. And, um, so in order for me to make every man's words be a liar and the divine's words be true, then I have to stand as an example. I have to show myself that in spite of emotions and feelings and somebody else's opinion, um, I stand on my truth that I am significant. I am relevant and I am an access to what the divine has mandated me um, to speak. 
Um, mm-hmm. The things that come out of my mouth is not something that I learn from in a book. Though I can hear other people speaking and confirm the things that have the Spirit has spoken through me on a personal level, but it's not for my use only. It is to share and to help elevate and bring forth the remnant minds who are going to be a powerful in such a place as this. And it's not going to come with a background of scholarship and diplomas and degrees and PhDs. Um, as simple as a GED, which is the glory of divinity's educational divinity, divine um, education, that's what the spirit revealed <laughs> to me. But those who are low, but are yet open to um, leadership and guidance and who has been, been able to um, touch, make that connection uh, with the divine because she said she would take the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And she would take the weak things of the world to confound the mighty. And for in this reason why we, I, I can only speak for myself, um, for her to take me from the low low to bring me to a position uh, of a highness, but not in arrogance, but divine relevance for whatever it is that we're speaking. So the things that the spirit, I, I wanted to, some, uh, it was a word that you find, I can't remember the name of it or how you pronounce it, but it's a substance that you find in South America. And it's supposed to, um, you drink it. Awasata, awa, ayahuasca. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, ayahuasca. That word just kept coming to me like three or four different times. And I'm like, well, is this something you want me to experience? So I started listening, um, reading up on it, watching YouTube channels and reference to people's the different experiences. And I noticed what they all have in common is when they take it, they never come out of it without some type of confirmation of what it is that they're supposed to be doing in such a time as this. My thing is, I know what I'm doing. I mean, I know what I was sent here because the spirit showed me when I was um, in this particular realm, um, not with white lights, but like um, a telescope that has all those different colors of lights. And then I was like on a, a uh, see-through glass, and then a black shiny, um, a black shiny floor um, that, that looks like black marble or something. And there were pillars, and I was hiding behind a pillar, like the size of maybe a five-year-old. And there was a great council, and the council was speaking um, to the people. And I was just, you know, trying to peek around the um, the pillars, in the, but I was trying to hide. And then all of a sudden, I heard the voice say, now who is going to go before me and prepare the way? So I silently, you know, kind of like squeezed up real tight up against the pillar. And I was actually listening for my twin brother's voice. I was listening to maybe my sister's voice, listening for somebody's voice that I would recognize to speak and say um, say something. But I'm standing there and men didn't hear nothing at all. And I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. The council's asking who's going to go. And at that point, I'm thinking the council, the one speaking is the divine internal parent. And I know that there's something in me that I didn't even get to share with my own parents because of some situations that I'm I'm not going to have to deal with that right now. But nevertheless, nobody said anything. And then all of a sudden, I find myself stepping away from the pillar and I turn to walk up this long, um, black, shiny floor. And it was clear. I mean, forgive me. It was a sapphire a sapphire blue, like, you know, sapphire blue floor, and it was black glass on both sides, and then the um, the pillar. And then I walked to the, um, to the middle, and I don't know, my son, if you ever seen uh, what they call great northern, um, great northern lights, like up in Alaska. I used to live in Alaska I've at seen, one time. I haven't seen them in person, but I've seen them online. 
Yes. Okay. So imagine seeing forms of uh, of deities, but their their shape, their look, their image is like great northern lights, and they're sitting on these gigantic, like probably bigger, taller than these trees around me, and they're sitting on these thrones, and all of a sudden I raise up my hand in the middle of the floor. And I'm looking at these thrones with these great northern light spirits sitting on them. And I said, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go for you. And then all of a sudden, oh, I got goosebumps all over me because it just, um, mm, mm, mm. Well, say, well, say, is this is a dream or this is an experience of my wife? This is an experience, like. Not not a dream. It's like as real as I'm talking to you. Well, what I'm saying is, you mentioned ayahuasca. Is this a, is this an experience? No, I want. I had. I heard somebody was telling me you need to go take some ayahuasca. I never did, and okay. then I shift over to what I'm telling you now. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yep. All right. So, 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 so I wanted to because I was curious, but I I was saying I don't need to because I already know what I was sent here to do. I'm just having some issues on figuring out how to do it around so many people who don't really comprehend the things that I'm saying. I'll say this to you. I'll say in my journey, in my journey, um, the biggest key to my journey I, I mentioned earlier in, 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 in the show was changing the type of man that I was. I started to honor the divine feminine and the universe started to bring different types of females to me, females with gifts, females who could see entity, entities, females who could tell me, hey, you have a guardian standing next to you, females who could communicate, meet another one what, that could communicate with the guardian with me, other females who could, you know, so I, I, saying that, um, I honor what you're saying because you, you're, you're more tuned in to having an experience. But I want to tell you, I have a friend. I have a friend who always was able to see and hear stuff her whole life. And then one day, one day in the right setting with the right intention, she took the right psychedelic and now she is closer to what you might want to call an oracle. Uh -huh. she, does what, she does the things that you can see in movies. You know, like I don't have that gift she has. She's got uh -huh. a powerful gift. What I'm going to tell you is that because you have a gift and you're already something, I'm telling you that whatever nature has made, it has made, it, 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 if something kept coming up in your ear, the nature made something for you, for us to ingest. And, and, and I will reiterate again, just because you take something doesn't mean that the door is going to open for you. So anybody that's listening to this and hearing that, I, first of all, I'm not suggesting that anyone do anything. I'm, excess, I'm, I'm, I'm suggesting that instead of paying tuition for, for school, Instead of paying tuition for the schools that they send you to, pay attention to the intuition sent to you from the unseen realm and from inside of you. Pay attention to that. Um, yes. My, my brothers and sisters, I hate to cut this off. I really we can don't. go on and on and on. Uh, Brother Tutan Ra, will, will you come back with us again? I will. I will. Oh. I, I, I wish I would love to talk to some of these people in your uh, in the comments, you know. <laughs> some of these people. Hey, listen, I want to tell you, you know, I've been listening to the conscious community for years. I've been watching a lot. I won't name no names, but I've seen a lot of people. Listen, I'm not out here telling you this because for, for some, what they say, cap, clout, whatever that. I'm writing a book. Nobody else has a book that I'm writing. I'm writing a book. Read my book. I'll give you a book for free. My book will have many, many different prices for it. But those who can't pay for it, I will give it for free. I will be selling my book like people sell bean pies. My <laughs> book is a divine revelation, and you will not be able to prove it to not be true. It's too many people connected to this. Everything is connected to this. It's a divine revelation. So I, I just would love to be able to talk to some of these people in the comments. You know? Mm -hmm. you know? That's yeah, it. that's, you know what, I don't even, um, from being behind stage, I don't even know how you're able to see the comments. I can't see any comments whatsoever. All I see is being back here in the, huh? Looking on my phone. You're on your phone. See, I'm looking on my phone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, oh. I've had people who've heard portions of my um, experience, 
Um, and they always tell me to, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. I had some say, well, you can write a novel um, from your experiences. And um, at one time, there was a sister who actually came into my life who's actually written three books. And she was going to um, show me how to do it. And she even came to my house. Now, the spirit has never opened up a door of opportunity for me to write the book. Um, but I was so eager to actually um, have somebody walk in who knew what they was doing. And then when she made it to my house, mm-hmm. she Mama started talking to me Mama about the book. Mama now, I just got to say this, Daddy. <laughs> she, said, she says, well, you're ready to write your book. And then all of a sudden, the spirit spoke through my lips. Mm-hmm. Not only to me, well, to her, but to me too. And she said, she is not here to write a book. She's here to fulfill the book. Well, right. in all that she said, the scroll. They mm-hmm. said the scroll, right. but meaning book. And we both looked at each other and I was like, well, I need to find out what my part is in this scroll that I'm supposed to be fulfilling. And that's what my journey's been to fulfill the book and with that daddy i'm complete right. oh, you can find me on uh my instagram is tutamra keperu t-u-t-e-m-r-a underscore keperu k-h-e-p-e-r-u or at 25th dynasty I, I post a lot of things about my story on there about my revelation on there i'm kind of silent on there right now because i'm trying to finish up the book the book will be out next year 100 years after my tomb is discovered in 2022 so yeah. All right. I'm looking forward to talking to him offline. <laughs> Great. Peace. <laughs> Thank you, uh, everybody, for tuning in. Look, don't forget to uh, hit that button. Uh, you know, um, what is it called? Well, the one that says you're watching and uh, that you want to be a part of us. So oh, subscribe button, Daddy. Subscribe button and then hit the uh, notification button so that you will know when we're coming back again and we'll be right back peace daddy daddy yeah. do you got do you have five minutes of tutu rock kumpu, kumpu, ah! no, okay. no no uh, no you got five no. minutes so he can answer no. somebody's question in the um chat no Just five I minutes i gotta get my wife to the clinic <gasps> oh um, i forgot about that forgive me all right now Peace. Okay, then. Peace.